Hey everyone, so this is the second part of section five for chapter seven. It's the last section for the test, and it's uh, basically the last part of sailor respiration. Okay, so it's the it's the final stage, what I've been calling oxidative phosphorylation, but I'm really fine with you calling it the electron transport chain and uh, ATP synthase. It's totally fine. Uh, but we're going to discuss how in cellular respiration, energy in food, so the chemical energy, is going to be converted to another energy that's uh, better for the cell. It's easier for the cell to use, and that's ATP. It's another uh, chemical energy, but it's a, a better form of energy for the cell to use. Okay, so we're just basically the, the name of this game for cellular respiration, I want you to think of transformation. Transformation of uh, molecules into different molecules and, and capturing the energy that's released during that transformation. I think that's the best way to really think of this. Of course, the, uh, the last step, this oxidative phosphorylation, includes the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. You're really very familiar with this already. The difference here is that it's going to be occurring in a different organelle for cellular respiration. Now, the chloroplast was the organelle for uh, photosynthesis. It had an electron transport chain and ATP synthase, but now we're talking about the mitochondrial electron transport chain and ATP synthase. So it's it, the orientation and, and the, where it's located is going to be different, but the concepts, guys, are actually really the, really the same, uh, pretty much. Okay, so this chain right here is going to occur in this membrane. Okay, so if you remember the the diagram that we drew in class and the structure of the mitochondria, and this is going to be the uh, inner membrane. So because that's an inner membrane, you want to envision this as having an outer membrane as well. So I'll just go ahead and draw that to, to give you uh, a feel for where we are in the mitochondrion. This will be the outer membrane. Okay, outer membrane, inner membrane. The elect, uh, electron transport chain is in that inner membrane, okay? This process works pretty much the same. Electron carriers like NADH are going to bring the electrons that they've collected in glycolysis and the electrons that they've collected in the Krebs cycle. They'll bring it to this chain and they'll bring them in a high energy form, okay? So that as they're transported down the chain, they're going to become what? Stop and think about that because it's the same as it was in photosynthesis. They change in some way. So because they come in as high energy, you're going to see that they uh, leave in low energy. So this is, uh, they're going to be low energy once they're completely passed along that chain. Just as it was in photosynthesis, the reason that these uh, electrons' energy changes is because we're going to transport hydrogen ions from the space in here, which is the matrix of the mitochondria. Now stop and think about where you are in that actual organelle. You, you should be able to draw the picture, but this is the matrix in here. We're going to transport them from here to here. So this is low concentration in here, high concentration out here. So again, it's a, it's a a form of active transport, so it requires energy. You get the energy from transporting these electrons. Okay. So now you'll have lots of H pluses in here. Of course, this location is the inner space. Okay, so that's that that little space in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Just as in photosynthesis, again, you're going to have all these H pluses out here, guys, and they're going to reach a critical concentration and go essentially back into the matrix. They go from high to low. That does not require any energy. It's a form of facilitated diffusion, simply going from high to low through a protein like you are right here through ATP synthase. We know that what ATP synthase does, it basically starts to churn and move and rotate. That's these arrows that I'm drawing here. Now the energy from the passage of hydrogen ions through ATP synthase allows it to convert that energy into a chemical reaction that brings together AEP and phosphate. You know what molecule it's going to make. It's going to make ATP. 
Guys, this is the whole point of cellular respiration, this ATP synthase step bringing together ADP and phosphate in a chemical reaction to create a, uh, ATP. You create lots of ATP here. This is the whole point of it, is to make this ATP so that we can, the cell can perform cellular reactions to maintain homeostasis. Okay, so lots of stuff going on there, but uh, we will break it down several times before the test, so don't worry. The other thing I want to mention uh, here is that, it's weird, okay. Um, in, in the uh, electron transport chain inside of the thylakoid membrane, the last step or where the, where the electron transport chain transferred electrons to was, a, was the second photosystem in the pathway. Okay, this is not a, a thylakoid membrane. This is a mitochondrial inner membrane, so the situation is different. We're not going to pass these electrons off to the photosystem. Instead, we, we pass them off to oxygen. Remember that gas that we brought in uh, during our inhalation, during our, our breathing, right? We're gonna we're gonna use this oxygen, and the oxygen is going to collect low energy electrons. Okay, so those low energy electrons have to be collected. They're actually dangerous for the cell. They're what's called free radicals that can potentially destroy cells. So. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to collect them. The way that we do that is we load them onto oxygen. Oxygen takes those electrons. It also takes two hydrogen ions to create, you guessed it, H2O, water. So this right here is the reason that oxygen is a, a uh, reactant for the process of cellular respiration. And this is the reason that H2O is a product of cellular respiration. Very, very important process. It'll be on your test. Okay, so don't skip that part. Let's review. Let's review this last step here. Cellular respiration is no joke, and I and trust me, I'm I'm sensitive to that. So, you know, I'll work with you on the test, but you should really be able to understand this process as a whole. Not so much the details, but the process. Okay, the process, as I said before, is about transformation, transforming food. Which, which has a lot of energy. It's a chemical energy. It's the energy is stored in the bonds of these macromolecules. But we want to convert that energy into ATP, a more usable form of energy for, for an organism's cells. Okay, in glycolysis, we're going to create several things. We take in glucose as a reactant, and you also learn that you take in a little bit of ATP as a reactant, but um, we, out, we make more than we take in, so it's a net gain of ATP. So we make a little bit of ATP. We make a little bit of NADH. ATP is used in chemical reactions. So it goes where the cell needs it. NADH, like all electron carriers, report for duty at the ETC, this electron transport chain, which if we were drawing this totally accurately would be right here in that inner membrane. Um, book kind of gets that wrong in that diagram, but it's okay. We understand. Uh, NADH goes to the electron transport chain. Anytime you see NADH, FADH2, those are electron carriers. They're bringing electrons to the electron transport chain. The most important product of glycolysis, though, is these two pyruvic acids. You convert pyruvic acid into acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA feeds into the Krebs cycle. So this step right here, this pyruvic acid, this product, is the big, big one for glycolysis. In this conversion to acetyl-CoA, you make, you know, a few uh, NADHs. Of course, NADH goes where? Yeah, it goes to the electron transport chain. Acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle. It'll do its thing. Around and around we go. In this process, you create full electron carriers, you create NADH and FADH2, and then they go to the electron transport chain. So it's certainly a theme here with these electron carriers going to this chain. That, that's how important this last step is. You make a little bit of ATP here, nothing to write home about. You know, we make a few here, a few here. But really, we're investing all of our resources. It appears to me from this figure, all these electron carriers are going to this step right here. This step seems to be the most important to me. 
And it is because the result of this reaction, the electron transport chain and ATP synthase, are all of these ATP, so these 34 or so ATP. And you get that per glucose molecule. So it's it's a lot of ATP, guys. You're actually your cells are producing thousands of ATP per second. So it's a big deal. It's an important process. It's making all of the energy, you know, ATP is a form of energy. It's it's using that for all of the chemical reactions and all the movement and things that your cell is doing. It's 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 maintaining homeostasis. Without ATP production, uh, you wouldn't be able to regulate your cells and, and eventually uh, they would die, right? So this is, a, this is a very, very big deal, okay? I will review uh, kind of in a, like a table form the products and reactants of photosynthesis, or excuse me, cellular respiration. It's, it's really something that we need to focus on. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be big on that, but I want you to understand this. There's a relationship between products and reactants in these in these chemical reactions, okay? Glycolysis creates pyruvic acid, making it a product of it of glycolysis. This product though goes on to become essentially a reactant for the next step, right? Products from the Krebs cycle, these electron carriers, NADH, FADH2, are, yeah, they're made by the by the Krebs cycle, so they're products. They go on to become reactants for uh, for the electron transport chain. So there's a situation where things that are being made for the next step are made in the previous step, and then they're sent to that next step. Then that next step makes something that's required for the step after that, and so on and so forth. So there's a real relationship there, and you really need to understand that to get this process. And uh, you know, we'll get it. Re review these screencasts and, and review your notes from class and review your quizzes. Check out the pencast when it's available and come and see me. If you don't understand, come and see me. We'll sit down and uh, go over the stuff before the test. You're all, you're all perfectly capable of doing this. So, um, you know, don't wait till the last minute. Come and see me and I'll be glad to help. Okay, I hope this helps. Take care, guys.